Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, so happy to be with you today. And if you're in your living room, why don't you just clap your hands right now? presence of God. You know, it's amazing, but I've, I've, during this season, I felt the presence of God in such a powerful, strong way. God's doing something amazing, and I'm just believing that something awesome is going to happen. Amen. Also, also, um, there have been many that have been asking us how to give, and, and I want to say thank you to those who have been uh, uh, continuing to give online and even through mail. But uh, for those who have been asking, uh, our number is 931-240-3275. That's, you text that number and just text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 931-240-3275. And uh, we would greatly appreciate that. Then also, um, our physical address here is Fountain of Truth Church. 7036 U.S. Highway 70, Bartlett, Tennessee, 38133. Um, people have been asking me about our Easter service. Um, because of these newer guidelines and restrictions, um, we're not going to be able to do our drive-in service like we had talked about Wednesday night um, because we're trying to... Um, we're trying to be easy to deal with, and we're trying to be as safe as possible. And so. Your life. 
Sunday at 6.30 a.m. Evidently there was a glitch. And uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing communion, kind of a sunrise communion, um, Easter Sunday morning. God is so good. God is so good. It's going to be a different kind of message today, but uh, my inspiration came from Walmart. Uh, Thursday night I went in there and I was doing my social distancing and uh, all of a sudden I saw something and I thought that that will preach amen Acts chapter 16 reading verses 23 through 25 when they had laid many stripes upon them they cast them into prison charging the jailer to keep them safely who having received such a charge thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks and at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. (laughs) I love that. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. I want to preach. I I feel the Holy Ghost. I want to preach on this subject. Not today, Satan. Not today, Satan. (laughs) Amen. Let's bow our heads. God, I need your help. God, guide my words. God, help me to say something that will reach someone today. God, I feel, I feel in my spirit that someone needs to hear this word and someone needs to hear this message. Oh, God, help us to get an attitude or a spirit of not today, Satan, up on the inside of us. God, it's time for us to pray back. It's time for us to stand up. It's time for us to be what you've called us to be. God, we love you today and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Today, I, I, I don't have a message that is very um, complex or analytical. This message will not astound you or shock you. My message, though, is simply this. If we will praise the King of kings and the Lord of lords, absolutely anything can happen in this place. I, I don't care where you are. I don't care who you are. I don't care what kind of condition you are in. When we begin to praise God, that creates an atmosphere that He can work and move in. I know this is a different situation, but I believe with all of my heart, there is a miracle in your house today. and The blessings of God are right there beside you today. And you can have a move of God wherever you are today. If you'll make up your mind, I am going to praise my God. I am going to lift Him up. I'm not embarrassed to do it. I'm not ashamed to do it. I'm not worried about doing it. But I'm going to lift up my God today because even in this season, He is worthy of all of our praise. Amen. Amen. I said He's worthy of all of our praise. We see in Acts, the 16th chapter, that Paul and Silas are in Philippi, a Roman colony just inside the Macedonian border. 
One day as they were going down to pray by the river, they met a demon-possessed slave girl. She was a fortune teller. She earned much money for her masters. And as they went to pray, she began to follow after them. And she, used, she began to yell at the top of her lungs, These men are servants of God. They have come to tell you how to have your sins forgiven. This was not her trying to witness for them. This was not her trying to encourage them or back them up. No, this was her trying to make them feel small. To, and this was her trying to degrade them, to try to discourage them, to try to, to, to depress them. And evidently it didn't just happen once, but it happened day after day. This woman, she would begin to yell, these men are servants of God and they have come to tell you how to have your sins forgiven. Finally, finally, Paul got irritated. Finally, he got aggravated. Finally, Paul said, you know what? I am a child of God. I'm tired of being pushed around. I'm tired of being discouraged. I'm ready to fight back. And he turned around and he said, not today, Satan. In the name of Jesus Christ, get thee behind me. Come out of her right now. Amen. And so I was, I was walking in uh, the Walmart on Thursday night, and I was keeping my social distancing and, and uh, doing what I was supposed to do. But as, as I walked into Walmart and as I, I walked past the men's section, I saw a T-shirt, and I thought, buddy, that will preach. Can y'all still hear me without the microphone? And so, since the T-shirt was only $5, I realized that it was the will of God for me to have that T-shirt so that I could preach about it. You can think this is funny if you want to, but I feel the will of God right now because I feel like there's some people in here that need to be reminded you are a child of God. You are a child of the King and you've been pushed around too much. Depression has tried to fight you. Anxiety has tried to fight you. It's time for you to make up your mind. Not today, Satan. I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. The Bible says that when Paul rebuked that spirit, it came out in that same hour. I'm telling you that there is still power in the name of Jesus. There's power over disease in the name of Jesus. There's power over depression and anxiety in the name of Jesus. There's power over darkness in the name of Jesus. Come on, turn around to somebody and tell them, and not today, Satan. You thought you had me discouraged, but not today, Satan. You thought I was going to give up, but not today, Satan. You thought I was going to throw in the towel, but not today, Satan. You thought I quit worshiping, but not today, Satan. You thought I quit going to church, but not today, Satan. You thought I quit praying, but not today, Satan. You thought I quit getting in your word, but not today, Satan. Amen. Would you clap your hands? <laughs> but her master, sing. That the demon was cast out of her and seeing that she could no longer tell fortunes and make them money. Her masters became angry. They went to the magistrates or the law. They told them that Paul and Silas were troubling their city, were teaching uh, customs which were against the law. In Acts 16 verse 22, it says this. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. You see, what happened was the devil saw the work that Paul and Silas were doing for the Lord, and he didn't like it. He saw that they were telling people about Jesus, and he didn't like it. He saw that they were casting demons out, and the devil didn't like it. He saw that they were baptizing people in the name of Jesus Christ, and he didn't like it. And he decided if he could have Paul and Silas locked up, if he could have them put into prison, then their work, God's work through them, could be stopped. Listen to me, church, today. The devil doesn't like the work that we do. The devil doesn't like to see you witnessing to your family and to your co-workers. The devil doesn't like to see a revival breaking loose in Bartlett and in Memphis. The devil doesn't like to see people being filled with the Holy Ghost and repenting of their sins. The devil doesn't like to see people being baptized 
in the name of Jesus. But I want to remind you uh, of an old song we used to sing. I don't care what the devil don't allow. I'm going to worship it anyhow. I wish uh, uh, get thee behind me, Satan. I wish uh, don't mess with me, Satan. I wish uh, uh, not today, Satan, uh, would rise up in your spirit and you would say, I don't care what you don't like. I'm going to worship God anyhow. I don't care if you fight or not. I'm going to live for God anyhow. I don't care what the devil doesn't allow. We're going to go around and witness to everybody we know. Anyway, I'm going to be blessed. Anyway, we're going to have revival. Anyway, the church is going to grow. Anyway. Not today, Satan. We're having church in Memphis. Not today, Satan. We're having revival in this world. Not today, Satan. But the devil would like nothing more than to stop the work that God is doing through you. He thinks that he can do this by putting you in a prison like he did Paul and Silas. You see, the devil likes locking God's people up. The devil likes making God's people feel as though they are isolated and they're all by themselves. The devil would like to put you into a prison of self-doubt. Uh, debt, uh, uh, self doubt, a prison of shyness, saying things like, I can't do it. I'm too young to do anything for God. I'm too old to do anything for God. I'm not good enough to do anything for God. The devil would like to put you into a prison of illness. Uh, 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 I'm scared I'm going to get this virus. I'm, I'm scared I'm going to get a bad diagnosis. I'm, I'm scared uh, uh, I'm going to be sick and, and I won't be able to live for God. The devil would like you to put you into a prison of sin. I just can't give up my sins. It's just too hard. I would do something for God, but I can't give up these habits. I would like to make a stand for Jesus, but my sins have too strong a grip on my life. The devil would like to put you into a prison of defeated thinking, saying nothing good ever happens to me. I can't lead anyone to God. Our church can't have revival. I can't break loose out of these chains. The devil would like to put you into a prison of your past sins. You just don't know where I came from. You don't know how many mistakes I've made. I'm not good enough to be involved in the work of God. You don't know all the mishaps that have taken place in my life. I've been too bad for God to do anything on the inside of me. Somebody needs to have a not today Satan spirit rise up in their mind because I don't care what the devil has thrown at you. I know this. The enemy wants to lock you up and bind you just as tight as he possibly can. But no matter how low you may get, no matter how tight those bonds may be, there is an answer. There is freedom in the name of Jesus. There is liberty in the name of Jesus. There is hope in the name of Jesus. I'm preaching to you right now that my God is able to move. Not today, Satan. I'm going to worship God anyway. Not today, Satan. I'm not going to give up. Not today, Satan. This uh, depression is not welcome in my house. Not today, Satan. I refuse to be discouraged. I'm just going to be honest with you, okay? The devil in this life is going to do his best to try to cause you trouble. (laughs) Hey, man, it's just the truth. I, I, I spoke this Wednesday night. It rains on the just and the unjust. I, 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 when, when you decide to live for God, that doesn't mean your life is going to be problem free. That means that the devil is going to put his crosshairs right on your back and he's going to do absolutely everything he can to, to discourage you and fight you and get you to stop. But years ago, I'm, I'm talking about 20 years ago, I was here at this church and, and uh, I, I went and I found a church bulletin and there was a poem in there and and I, I believe it's the will of God for me to read it to you today because I, I believe this will help you. It says this, when troubles assail you, God will not fail you. When life seems empty and there's no place to go, when your heart is troubled and your spirits are low, when friends seem few and nobody cares, there is always God to hear your prayer. And whatever you're facing will seem much less when you go to God and confide and confess. For the burden that seems too heavy to bear, God lifts away on the wings of a prayer. And seen through God's eyes, earthly troubles diminish. And we're given new strength to face and to finish. 
finish life's daily tasks as they come along if we pray for strength to keep us strong. So go to our Father when troubles assail you, for His grace is sufficient, and He will not fail you. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I know a God that cannot fail. I don't know how much pain you're in, but I know a God that cannot fail. I don't know. I don't know what you're dealing with, but I know a God whose arms are bigger than ours, whose hands are bigger than ours. I know a God who is able. He is able. Now here are Paul and Silas. Here they are. They've been stripped. They've been beaten. They've been cast into prison. <laughs> Their feet were placed in the stocks. Amen. I bet the devil thought that he had them beaten. I, I, I bet the devil had a big grin across his face. Try to have revival now when you're locked up. <laughs> try to witness now. <laughs> try, to, try to have joy in your life now. Try to have peace in your life now. See, I got you now right where I want you. If anybody had a right to be discouraged, it was Paul and Silas. If anybody could have possibly gotten mad, it was Paul and Silas. If anybody could have given up, it was Paul and Silas. But they didn't get mad at God. They didn't give up. They didn't quit. But I think what happened in there, I think Brother Paul maybe looked over it. Brother Silas said, I know your feet are hurting. And I know you've been embarrassed. And I know it's dark in here. And I know this situation stinks. But I made up my mind that the enemy is not going to win. And I just feel like he just, he just went ahead and said, not today, Satan. I'm going to worship God anyway. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. God and the prisoners heard them. You see, Paul and Silas knew that God inhabits the praises of his people. They knew that when the praises goes up, the glory comes down. They knew the only answer they had was by touching God. And so at midnight, in a situation of misery, they began to lift their voices and they began to sing unto the Lord and God moved. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I wish you'd just say, not today, Satan. You will not win. I'm going to praise him because when the praises goes up, the glory comes down. He doesn't say when the praises... He doesn't say he inhabits the praises of his people at the church house. He doesn't say he inhabits the praises of his people at the temple. He doesn't say that. It just says that he inhabits the praises of his people. I may be all by myself, but I'm going to praise Him. I'm going to lift Him up. I'm going to worship Him. <laughs> Amen. 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 They had been beaten, but they praised God anyway. They had been stripped, but they praised God anyway. They were in prison, but they praised God anyway. Others were staring at them, but they praised God anyway. Others probably told them, why don't you just be quiet? Why don't you shut your mouth? But they praised God anyway. Anything to touch heaven. Anything to have a move of God. God, anything to have peace in my life, anything to have liberty in my soul, anything, I've got to touch him. And all of a sudden, suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. Oh, I wish you'd praise God right now. Oh, I wish you'd lift him up right now. Oh, At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. At midnight, what a, what a dumb time to praise God and sing praises unto God and worship Him. That didn't even make good sense. I know they were worn out. I know they were weary. I know they were miserable. Why in the world would they worship at midnight? Evidently, they must have thought, we need a revival around here in the midnight hour. I don't know if you realize this or not. If you don't realize this, then your head's been under a rock. 
o'clock. But I'm telling you, we are living in the midnight hour. We are living in an hour when it seems so dark. We are living in an hour when it seems so miserable. But in that hour, I'm telling you, God's people need to have revival. And the best thing you can do in the midnight hour is to lift your voice and lift your heart and begin to praise God with everything that you've got. You can praise God anywhere, anytime, anyhow. I had something happen to me. Woo! My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, right before church, uh, I had something happen to me. I, I, I was sitting over in the office area. I was praying, and, and uh, Sister Melissa's here and uh, to, to sing with the praise group. But Brother Antonio, he, he's here on the property, but he, he can't come in. He's not coming in because he doesn't want to defy that, that, that ordinance that says you can't have uh, too many people. And so... He, he, he just been outside while we're having church so that his wife could be in here. And so I was sitting there in the office area. And all uh, he must have been right outside the door, Sister Melissa. And all of a sudden, me praying, trying to find the mind of God for this message. All the time, all of a sudden, Brother Antonio started singing, He's an on time God. Yes, he is. You understand, there wasn't any music out there. There wasn't anybody out there patting his back. But he just starts singing even louder. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Oh, he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. You hear me right now. He is an on-time God. He's moving right now. He's blessing right now. You don't have to be in a crowd to get victory. You don't have to be in the church house to worship. All you got to do is begin to sing. Begin to worship. Amen. Amen. I'm almost done. Y'all, I'm tired. Listen to me. Listen to this. Amen. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword. And would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. I'll be honest with y'all. This, this is one of my favorite passages to, to preach from. I love preaching from this passage. But uh, I never have understood this. I don't understand how. Because if I'd have been in that prison and the doors came open... Buddy, I've been gone. I'd have been out. <laughs> See y'all. <laughs> you know. But but no. They didn't run. They didn't flee. And as I read that, all of a sudden it hit me. I think I know what happened. <laughs> when those men of God began to worship God. <laughs> oh my Lord. And when God began to move, there was something about that worship. There was something about that anointing. That drew them. They didn't want to miss what God was doing. They didn't want to miss how God was working. Can, can I just preach to you for just a little bit longer and tell you that this world, if somebody's hungry for God, your worship is not going to offend them. If somebody's hungry for God, the anointing is not going to offend them. But in this hour, we've got what this world needs. We've got the presence of God. Don't quit worshiping. Don't quit lifting Him up. Don't quit believing. Listen, I'm telling you, this world needs needs the church to pray. This world needs the church to worship. Your friends need you to lift God up. They need you. They need you. Amen. Brother Antonio's amen in me outside the door. Did y'all hear him? He said, amen. Listen. God right now. In their home. In their lives. God, there are people right now that are so stirred. They know they need an answer. They know they need a breakthrough. They know they need revival in their life. God, I'm asking you right now to just touch them. God, I'm going to worship you here in a minute. We're going to start. I, we're going to start worshiping you on the count of three, God. When that happens, I'm so thankful that I know that you're omnipresent, which means you're everywhere all at the same time. God, as we begin to worship, God, I want you to just begin to move in every house, in every living room, in every kitchen.
every bedroom, everywhere where this is being listened to. God, we want you to just have your way. Church, I, I, I'm getting ready to count to three. When I count to three, I want you to just raise your hands and just begin to worship God. Would you do that? Get ready. One, two, three. God, we praise you. God, we worship you. God, I love you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, God, I may not be able to come to the church in person, but God, that doesn't mean I can't praise you. That doesn't mean I can't worship you. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, God. We love you with everything that we've got. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you. Oh, you're wonderful. You're awesome. You're mighty. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. We love you. We're praying for you wherever you are. We're believing that in this season we're going to have revival. Don't forget, don't forget, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock we'll be having a live feed. Look, share these messages. Share these messages. People need this. Amen. We're not trying to get numbers. We're, we're trying to get souls. Share this. My house. We're going to be praying. Amen. Please try to stay home and try to be safe. Amen. We love you all. Next, next Sunday, it's Easter Sunday, 6.30 a.m. I'm going to be doing communion. And it's just going to last maybe 15, 20 minutes. And then we're going to be having church at 11 o'clock, live feed from right here. I'm going to wear my Easter Sunday tie. Amen. God bless you. I love you with my whole heart. Amen. Be safe.